Hi everyone, today let's talk about the tech behind modern dental implant treatments. So if you're a geek, you're gonna love this video. And also if you just wanna get a real deep insight of what happens behind the scenes to help make the treatment more safe, then keep watching. My name's Gers, I'm a cosmetic and implant dentist. I'm based in Marlow near London in the UK. And I've been doing dental implant treatment for a very long time now. And oh, every year we change things in certain situations and technology has really helped us to improve the quality of the results that we get, that reduce our overall treatment time down and actually reduce the number of visits our patients need to come in for to have the, the dental implant work done. Now some of the stuff that I'm gonna talk about has been around for a little while. Some of it is fairly new, let's say in the last five years, become popular and some of it has been around but not that many people use it that could be big because of the cost of the equipment or they just don't see the the actual value but let's go into one of probably the oldest thing and this is a cone beam CT scan now whenever we do an implant treatment we have a CT scan and most people have been to a dentist and have an x-ray where the machine goes around your head okay and typically this is a, a pan oral or an OPG type of x-ray it's a two-dimensional x-ray it just shows a picture of all of your teeth on the screen with a little bit of bone going around it and this is great just to find out roughly where the bone is but it's not accurate enough to give us information like the volume of bone so on an x-ray like this all you can see is the height of bone we have no idea on thickness a cone beam CT scan is derived from medical CT scans where they take scans of the the body and it's specifically designed for the upper and lower jaws on this kind of scan we can put it on a computer and we can navigate all the way around the the area which we're going to try and treat we can see if the roots of the teeth are in are they out is there enough bone is there enough thickness how dense is the bone because on all x-rays or cbct scans the stuff which is more dense looks whiter and the stuff which is less dense looks well but darker and this is important because we want good quality dense bone for our implants so we've got a good prediction from the CT scan what kind of bone we're going in and sometimes we're not going in straight so one half of the implant might be in dense bone one half of the implant might be in softer bone this will be important later on the next thing which I would say is quite new at least in our practice is a 3d scanner now unlike the cone beam CT scanner which is ultimately an x-ray machine this is more like a camera and if you if you've ever been to the dentist and you've had molds done then you'll know that it's probably not the nicest experience in the world but a, a 3d scanner will essentially take that mold for you by taking a series of photos of your teeth usually they click or sometimes they're silent but at the end of it we get a computer model which is very very accurate of your teeth now whenever we're doing implants especially if we're just doing one or two as opposed to a full set I'll take a cone beam CT and will take a, a scan like this because when you combine the two things you get something very special which is a surgical guide and what this lets us do is plan our implant placement on a computer before even giving an injection okay so we have all of our what we call our diagnostics we want photos we want our uh, 3d scan we want the the cone beam CT scan from that we can plan exactly the right position position to like point 0.1 of a millimeter we're very accurate uh, of where we want this implant and this is important if we've got important structures like nerves or blood vessels or other teeth which we want to avoid accuracy becomes really really important so after we've planned it on a computer we can then have a 3d printed guide made and the guide fits over the natural teeth and it has a hole where our implant drills go in if we drill to the exact correct depth we can then place our implant through this and we know that our implant is going to be in a very very precise position and ultimately this reduces complications and makes it a much quicker and easier treatment so remember I said we've got situations where half the implant might be in dense bone, half of it might be in soft bone. If you imagine you're trying to drill a hole 
and half the wall is dense, half is soft, your drill is always going to veer, if you're doing this freehand, it's always going to veer into the softer bone. And this is going to ultimately mean a hole is in the wrong position and the implant would be in the wrong position as well. Now with fully guided surgery, you, you just cannot do this because the guide will always hold the drill in exactly the right position, helping with our accuracy. Now if we look at the dental implant itself, even this has come a long way since its first um, since its first inception, which was many, many years ago. And in general, we use titanium because we know that titanium allows the bone to grow very close to it without causing an immune reaction. Now, there are other materials, for example, there's pure ceramic implants, but I've never used them, although I know a little bit about them. I might make a video to show you the pros and cons, but even this technology is coming on quite well. And this could potentially be the future of dental implant treatment. But we're going to go with something safe, which we know has worked for years and years, and that is a standard type 4 titanium implant. Now, the surface of this implant could be smooth or it could be roughened. If we roughen the surface, it lets more surface area, it lets the bone attach to more surface area, which is a very good thing long term. Now, some implants have half and half. They have a rough surface which goes in the bone and they have a smooth surface which which comes out of the gum. So these are really great implants for those people who are suffering more with gum disease and one kind of implant is inappropriate. So this can get us out of trouble. Now some implants don't come dry. They come in a liquid cylinder and these implants typically have a special coating on the surface which allows the blood cells to adhere to them much more quickly. And this in increases the speed of the healing around the implant and it means that we can load, i.e. put a tooth on top of the implant in much less time. Now, I routinely use these implants and the manufacturers do say you can put a tooth on after one month. I don't really trust it, but after about two months, I'm much more comfortable putting a, a tooth on top of these implants. And compare this to three or four months, which we used to have to do previously. It, every month really does count. So we're able to load the tooth earlier, which means our patients can have teeth a little bit sooner. Now, in some situations, we still need to wait for the gum to heal to get the final shape there. But in the vast majority of cases, our patients can have a tooth on their implant after eight weeks of placing it. Now, how do we know if the implant is actually ready? So we are waiting for a process called osseointegration. Okay, integration of the implant with the bone. And the way that we test the tightness is how tight the implant goes in when we're placing it. So we've got a mini kind of, it's almost like a torque wrench, and this measures the torque of the implant going in. And usually if we want to put a temporary tooth on it straight away, we want this value to be above 30. In general, this is a pretty accurate way of testing it. But how tight is that implant after one month? We just don't know that you can't reverse torque because if you break that connection, that's it, you're back to square one with healing. So we've got a device called an ISQ machine. And this essentially, you put something in the implant and it's got magnets and radio fields, which causes tiny little vibrations. Now patients who I use this for say, oh, they can feel a kind of a pulsing, but it gives us a numerical value of how tight this implant is. And that's really, really useful for those situations where we're really short on time and we're not sure has, has enough healing actually happened. Let's say we've done what we call an immediate implant where half the implant is in bone, half of it is in bone growth grafting material and we just don't know if that implant is tight enough. Well we can put this ISQ peg into the implant and we can test it and we can get a, a recording a number between, it's usually between 30 and 70 at day one, at 30 days, at 60 days if we need to, which is a much more accurate way of telling us how well this implant is integrated. And in very few cases, two in the last five years, there's two patients in the last five years where we've got a feeling that an implant is becoming looser and looser for no apparent reason. 
Well, doing this ISQ test really helps us to understand is the implant actually getting loose or is it something else that the patient's feeling somewhere else? So these advances have really been focused around implant treatment because that's the majority of the kind of stuff which I do. Normal dentistry, again, is evolving and one day we'll be able to, to generate teeth from stem cells, but this has been a dream for a long time. Remember, advances in medicine happen very slowly. Now, I mentioned guided surgery earlier and this is one of the big things which I've uh, I've embraced over the last couple of years but there isn't an, an additional advancement on this so it's possible to do live guided surgery okay and our colleagues in in medicine and surgery uh, my friend's a spinal surgeon he uses this all the time so it's something which is taken from there and it's been moved into dentistry and essentially what it is the guy that your drill is calibrated with cameras around the room so that a computer can put the CT scan and your drill together in the same kind of uh, image, if you will. And when you move the, the, the drill in real life, it's replicated on a computer screen. Now, I've never used this myself, but it's it's kind of a cool thing uh, because it means there's no, there's no guides there. But my only downside is it's still not gonna stop a drill from veering off if we've got different densities of bone. But again, this is one of those things which is on the horizon. It might pick up, it might not, just like any trend anywhere. So I hope you got something out of it. I hope you found this video interesting and useful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. So if you've got a question about any of the stuff which I talk about in these videos, just write it in the comments and I'm gonna start doing quick fire short YouTube videos, which will just essentially answer a lot of the questions which I get on here, okay? All right guys, until the next one, take care.